In our video today, we will talk about positron. Nobel Prize in Physics in 1936 was awarded to Carl David Anderson for the discovery of positron. Let us read the citation from the Nobel Prize Committee. The citation is like this. In developing quantum mechanical theory, Paul Dirac predicted that all matter has a kind of mirror image, antimatter, a particle and its antiparticle, if charged, should have opposite charges. By studying the tracks of cosmic ray particles in a cloud chamber in 1932, Carl Anderson discovered a positively charged particle with a mass seemingly equal to that of an electron. Carl Anderson's particle was the first antiparticle proven by experiment and was named positron. So here is uh, relativistic energy momentum relation. E square is equal to P square C square plus M zero square C to the power 4. And we have taken square root, so we have a plus or minus sign. E equal to plus or minus square root of P square C square plus M0 square C to the power 4. Here we have not neglected the minus sign. That is what will lead to the negative energy states. According to Dirac, we have to take both the signs, plus sign and minus sign. That means an elementary particle like electron can have energy, can have positive energy, which is in this band, this blue band. And also it is possible for an elementary particle to have energy in this band, which is the negative energy band. And negative energy band is completely filled. If you have a particle with a positive energy somewhere here, there is no way it can come to the negative energy states by emitting radiation. We know usually the particles will emit radiation and then they, their energy will be reduced. But in this case, because all the negative energy C is completely filled filled up. That is why it is not possible for an electron with the positive energy to jump to a negative energy state. This is because these states are filled and due to Pauli's exclusion principle, no new particle can come. If the energy states are filled, then no new particle can be accommodated. However, the reverse situation is still possible. Suppose you have a radiation with sufficient energy which falls on an electron in the negative energy C. And it has sufficient energy, that means it has energy more than 2m0 C square. Then this particle with a negative energy, negative energy electron, can go and cross this barrier and go up to the positive energy states. A new electron with positive energy has been created. So that is a new electron. And when you remove a negative energy electron from the negative energy C, it is equivalent to removing negative energy is equivalent to supplying energy. And removing negative charge is equivalent to supplying positive charge. So that means equivalently you create a positive energy positron. Removing a negative energy electron is equivalent to supplying a positive energy positron. If you draw, it is like this. A photon has disappeared and it has created a pair, an electron positron pair, E plus 
E minus. And also charge is balanced because photon has zero charge. Electron has negative charge, whereas positron has positive charge. So it's fine. Charge is balanced. This exotic theory of negative energy C has to be had to be proved experimentally. So such a thing happened in the works of Anderson, who was studying cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are generally high energy protons and also photons. So when high energy photon has energy more than 2m0 c square, where m0 is the mass of the electron, half a mV, this is half a mV, 0.511 mV. That means each, if the photon has a energy um, equal to twice of this, then it will be able to create electron-positron pair. So what Anderson was studying in a cloud chamber, this is a very famous picture and it really uh, changed our perception about matter and antimatter. So let us look at this picture carefully. So here is a chamber and here is a chamber. These two chambers are separated by a lead block. This is a charged particles track. The track has less curvature here and more curvature here. That means from looking at this picture we can understand that the velocity or the kinetic energy is large here and while crossing the lead block it has reduced its kinetic energy. That is why its curvature has grown. So it is path is more curved and the path is less curved. Here the kinetic energy is more, here the kinetic energy is less. That means the particle must have gone from the lower chamber to the upper chamber. So that is the velocity direction. That is the direction of velocity. And uh, magnetic field is applied such that it is going towards inside the page of the paper. For a positively charged particle, the curvature will be towards left. And indeed, the particle has curved towards the left because the velocity is upwards. That means this elementary particle, which has mass equal to the mass of electron, has positive charge. So that is a positively charged electron. That is what was discovered by this epoch making. This is the epoch making cloud chamber photograph because it changed the understanding of um, particles and antiparticles and uh, the first evidence of antimatter which is very exotic, exotic type of matter called the antimatter. Now we know that indeed that there exists antimatter in the universe. And thank you for watching.